Well, hello guys, here is you with another video. This time we're going to solve a question for the grade 11. This one is related to vectors and is one of the topics that is going to be exam at the end of the year. Before we move on, subscribe for the channel and thumb up for the video. I hope it helps. This question say a pulley system and this question is coming from a November 2022 in the Eastern Cape province. It's important to note that one. A pulley system is used to keep a heavy object at rest uh, as shown in the diagram below. Now, an important thing here is that the object is at rest. Therefore, the system is at equilibrium. And that is a very important uh, point here. If the system is at equilibrium, it means that the net force is equal to zero. The total net force is equal to zero. And this, we can think like it is going to be zero in the x-axis, so F net in the x-axis is equal to zero as well as the f net in the y-axis is also equal to zero it's important to note and this guys is not other thing than newton first law okay so i want you to know this important thing so you can actually use newton first law to solve this question guys there is the drawing and there is a heavy object in which you have two um, tensions two forces acting one on the right which is 1284,95 that force is the same as this force here because it's the same tension there so let, let me do it maybe like this so you can see it properly this force here that is acting on the object is 1284,95 all right a newton and then this other force here with the other uh, rope there will be equal to 1440 newton important to note that one also on this object is way acting and um, the line here that way is supposed to be longer but i don't have a space and i don't want to now um, draw on the other one but anyway that is what you see this is not a free body diagram though so I define the term resultant vector we can say that resultant force is the sum of two or more vectors it will be accepted question 2.2 2, draw a vector diagram showing the forces acting on the object label the forces and indicate the angle on your diagram they don't say they don't give you scale it doesn't say that it must be accurate but let's do it as accurate as we can even though we're not going to do scale so you understand that okay so now we're going to start or when you start with this one you can draw any force first it doesn't really matter so we're going to start with the force of 1284,95 this is question 2.2 and we are going to solve it here so starting from here and this is going to be very um very roughly i'm going to draw small set of axes you do not have to do it but it will be helping you for the angles okay so if that is the object there and from there you are going to draw a vector which correspond with the same direction as this vector of 1284 so this vector here is going to be somewhere there. They don't want you to do it with scale. If you want, you can do it more um, accurately. And this is F, um, let's call F1 or F, um, F, F1 is fine. F1 is fine. And this one is equal to 1284.95 Newton. They want the angle and then we know from the a picture in the question that this angle here between the y-axis and the force is 40 degree. So this angle here is 40 degrees. All right, now what? What is recommended? It's recommended that right here on the head of this first vector you draw, then you will have another small set of axes. So you can get a more accurate idea there. Okay, so now there you are going to place the force of four, uh, 1440, keeping the direction as it is there. And that direction 
is going to be all the way here. Now, to be accurate, that force should end at this point more or less. Let's do it a little bit more accurate. And let's, you know what, let's maybe use another color. Like this one here. So you can see better. So this vectors go all the way up until there. This, I'm going to call it F. 2 second by force 2 or something like that and this is equal to 1440 newton okay so now angles what angle you know that this angle here is going to be 55 therefore this one here is going to be 55 um, degrees it is given to you but they want the angle between the forces so if the angle is between the forces Okay, you need to know that uh, some calculations must be done there. If this one is 40, it means that this angle here, here, is going to be 90 minus 40 degree, right? And that one will be equal to 50 degrees. And if that one is 50 degree, it means that a um, this angle here is going to be also 50 degree because it's alternating between parallel therefore this one is also 50 degree and as you know mathematics remember the drawing is not uh, fully accurate this angle here then is going to be 105 degree all right that is that angle the final force that is acting there is the weight and because the system is at equilibrium when you draw the weight it must start here at this point and end right at the tail of the first vector you draw that one there is weight okay that one is the weight and this angle here which we have to to get because they're asking for the uh, level the force indicate the angles on the diagram that angle is also being asked and this is mathematics you need to know that when you add all the internal angles of a triangle you must get 180 okay so we can calculate it if you want but you need to know that um the, this angle here will be calculated by 180 minus 105 minus 40 and that will give you now 35 degree so 35 degree is this other angle so now we have all the angles included in the picture or in the drawing they want you to do if we um highlight here just for you to see we have 40 degree there we have 105 degree for the, uh, the angle in between and we have 35 for that that is the question okay that is question 2.2 and i hope you understand question 2.3 say calculate the weight of the object now for doing this one we have to use the um, equilibrium system here or you can use newton first law so to do that one the first thing i'm going to do is to draw a free body diagram which is not the picture i have just done here so i'm going to do 2.3 the free body diagram and i'm going to do it right on access right this is for me to understand the problem a little bit better it's not compulsory however is recommended this one is a y this one is x and what forces are acting there we have um f1 in this direction which is i'm going to call f1 remember we already gave a, a number then the previous question and we have an f2 in the other uh, direction there like oh my goodness it must be straight line so let's try to do a straight line that is better now and this one is going to be f2 okay and then finally we have the weight and the weight will be pointing straight downward this one is weight okay now this one is recalling from free body diagram vectors in the axis this f1 and f2 are not in any of the axes so you must take them to the axis you must determine the component when you do that you will have here f1 in x and when you take it to the y axis you will have here f1 in y okay when you do with f2 you do it same way you have f2 in x 
and you will have to extrapolate into the um, y-axis and you will have f2 in y-axis now because the system is at equilibrium and that is what we said at the beginning here and um, everything on the right will be equal to everything on the left and everything on top must be equal to everything at the bottom. They're looking for white, for weight, sorry, which is in the y-axis, and therefore we're going to work with the y-axis. This is what we are going to be working with. So, to do this one, we're going to weigh, uh, work quite organized, and we're going to start by saying in y-axis, because I am going to work in the y-axis. And I'm going to start by saying that f net is equal to zero. You do not have to do it if you don't want to. I want to write a y-axis and I want to write f net is equal to zero. If f net is equal to zero, the system is at equilibrium and it means that everything on top is equal to everything at the bottom. What do we have on top? We have f2 in y, we also have plus f1 in y, and that is a y, let me write the y properly, don't you get confused, and at the bottom we have weight, okay? Now, we don't know how much is f1 in y, and we are going to try to calculate. So let's go back to the picture, and let's remember the angles we have in the question, okay? Remember the angles we have in the question. We know that this one here is 40 degrees so we can use mathematics to calculate the value of f1 in y that is adjacent side to the 40 degree and therefore we can say here that f1 um, in the y-axis is equal to f1 which is the hypotenuse multiplied by the uh, cosine of theta because it's the adjacent Side. Theta in this case is 40 degrees. So we can say that this one is equal to F1 cos of 40 degree. There we go. That is a way we can use to calculate F1 in Y. So we can calculate it here on this side. Let's do it. F1 in Y is equal to F1 multiplied by the cosine of 40 degrees and then let's substitute f1 is going to be 1284,95 multiplied by the cosine of 40 degrees. When you solve that one, the answer is going to be 984,33. Let's keep it there. Newton, okay? So that value must be substituted in there. And we are going to do the similar analysis for this F2 in Y, which we also don't have. So let's calculate. Now, what do we know about F2? Let's go back to remember the angle. This angle here and um, this one here is exactly 55 degree that angle there. We're looking for Fy. Fy will be represented here. So it's the opposite side. This is F2 in Y. is the opposite side to the angle. And therefore, F2 in Y will be equal to F2 multiplied by sin of theta, which is in this case is 55. Let's calculate it here on this side. Let's say F2 in Y will be equal to F2 multiplied by sin theta we're using the opposite side to the um, angle and then if we substitute f2 in y will be equal to f2 which was 1440 and that is multiplied by sine of 55 degree when you calculate that one you get that f2 in y will be equal to 1 1,179,58 I'm rounding off here, but you can substitute everything in the formula and then you will have maybe a more accurate answer. And all we have to do is to add the two values. So let's do that. Let's substitute here. We have 1179,58 plus 984,33. And that will be the value of a weight there. Okay. And then the answer for weight is equal to 2163,9 newton. Now they're asking you for weight. Weight 
is a vector quantity and therefore we have to give a direction and I'm going to write down. The correct direction will be towards the center of the earth but I think down will do for now. And guys, this is a question about vectors. It is a good question to practice for this end of the G examination. I hope you understand and I hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Thumb up, subscribe for the channel. I'll see you next time. Mr. G here.